Okay, welcome to another Becoming a Modern Man. We are playing Jeskai Control once again, and this time we are running up against a Tron deck. Uh, Tron didn't do too well at the Pro Tour, so um, generally I wasn't expecting to see much of it, but uh, yes, this is uh, basically the same red green Tron deck we've seen before with a few upgrades uh, from Oath of the Gatewatch. Uh, this hand is okay, the first one wasn't great. Only one land. Uh, I think this one's probably keepable, so might as well run with it. Although, again, not particularly ideal. Lightning bolt, probably not what we're going to see. Maybe. I think I might end up keeping this on top. I suppose it gives us some early removal, and then obviously having a bolt in our graveyard is good with the snapcaster. So I think maybe that's why we end up keeping that here. Lead off with a Serum Vision, it's actually going to draw us into a Lightning Bolt, as we already know. Uh, Mana Leak, Lightning Bolt on top. Uh, definitely want to bottom those, I think. I think in general we would we'd like to draw some more lands to uh, get this hand really going. Place Urzaman into Chromatic Star. Spreading Seas, which is fairly good in this matchup, I guess. Um, Slightly awkward though because the Tron lands actually check for just cards with the name. Um, so even if I put Spreading Seas on Urza's Mine, it does become an island, but it's still called Urza's Mine. So at least I believe that's how it works. Um, so because it's still called Urza's Mine, if he plays an Urza's Tower and a Urza's Power Plant, then they'll still be able to make the extra mana. Urza's Mine won't be able to do that, but everything else will. Um, but let's say the Spreading Seas doesn't actually change the name of the card, so my understanding of how this works is that although we have turned it into an island, it's not a sort of perfect answer for him putting Tron together. So he growing stars, there's a grow, which is fairly good for us in the terms of uh, he not having like turn 3 Tron. He finds another Urza's Mine. Play Scalding Tarn, just pass the turn. Decided so that we kind of need to get aggressive here as soon as possible. I'm just going to bolt my opponent and then I'm going to run out this first Snapcaster without any particular value. Um, it doesn't seem great, but the fact is we're just not going to have a lot of time to. Uh, to sort of wait around. We're not very counter heavy, so it's just not going to work very well for us if we just sit here and do nothing. So he searched up a power plant with the expedition map there. And uh, we won't be casting that because we're not able to. Uh, we're going to tag our opponent down to 15 and pass the turn. We have a mana leak which we drew, which is nice. He's going to play Ancient Stirrings, looking for that tower. Um, not really prepared for him to just get a free shot at getting the tower and putting Toronto together, so I think we're going to counter this. May have been better to, to wait for the big spell, but I think once he hits the tower he's fairly set for mana. I think it's probably better to just counter that and uh, see how we go from there. So attack here, 113. For cryptic command, which is kind of annoying. Um, having another land would have been good because then we have Snapcaster Mana Leak up. Um, as it stands, we don't really have anything to do here. And their opponent is going to drop a Worm Coil Engine. Which is pretty bad news. He scrimes into an Eye of Ugin. So we can search up more uh, threats. Gonna electrolyze our opponent, put them down to 11. Can't attack here. Can't really do a whole lot. I could have like bounced the worm coil there, but it didn't really do anything for us. Um, and we probably want to counter whatever he's about to play. Although it looks like it's probably Ulamog. Yeah, so he plays Ulamog. Exiles two of our lands, which is pretty rough. Um, 
We're going to Cryptic to counter it, because we definitely don't want to see it hit play, but it's still going to exile two of our cards. Draw Path, which is nice, so that's good. That's a good answer to the Worm Coil engine there. Um, so we're not just out of this game yet, um, but it's certainly not looking great for us. Uh, we Path the Worm Coil. So we're going to get rid of that. Oops, sounded a bit funny. Um, and then he's playing Ghost Quarter and the Worm Coil Engine. Oh, and then the Pyroclasm to follow it up to get rid of my Snapcaster. Again, Worm Coil Engine is going to get Path here with the help of Snapcaster Mage. So we're not doing too badly for someone who had two uh, two permanents to get exiled uh, when we actually were a little stuck on mana as well. Um, but unfortunately he's got Eye Vugin, which kind of ruins our day. Um, I believe he searches up a World Breaker here, uh, which thanks to Eye Vugin is pretty cheap. Uh, which isn't great. Um, wraps this up. Um, actually, it's getting a little slow. Yeah, his his world breaker only costs like five mana now, thanks to Ivugin. So he's able to search that up and cast it, uh, and then he can just blow up one of our lands, and uh, that pretty much wraps up the game. So we're lagging a little bit here. So it's gone a bit slow, but. Yeah, basically he blows up our land, we're able to draw a Scalding Tarn. Not just dead, but we are pretty close to being just dead. It takes for five, I'm able to block. Then he dropped Khan, which is can exile my lands and things. Uh, that's all not very nice. Uh, and at 15, he's pretty much got me. Um, so that pretty much wraps that one up. Pause for a second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, everything started to lag a little bit. So we're back on with uh, game two here. So here's our opener. Not the best. We have a lot of stony silences in our deck, uh, in our sideboard that we want to bring in here, which would be nice to see. I don't know whether it's mul worth like hard mulliganing into Stony Silence. Um, otherwise his hand's decent and we can kind of dig for some stuff. Spell not particularly great though. Yeah, probably should drop took out the spell. Thinking about it, I don't think there are many uses for that in this matchup. So yeah, maybe this was a mulligan really. We draw a card, uh, we see a Geist of St. Traft and a Celestial Colonnade. Uh, very happy to take the Geist, uh, put the Colonnade on the bottom, we have a lot of lands here. So yeah, Geist could go a long way here, uh, provided he doesn't have Pyroclasm or anything like that. And we haven't really given him any reason to think Pyroclasm will be too great against us. So we do have Snapcaster Mages, which he knows about. But, you know, I don't think he would be particularly searching for a Pyroclasm. So, fingers crossed. He, again, doesn't get off to the fastest of starts, which is good for us. Um, again, no, it's not going to be a turn 3 Tron or anything like that. River's a little unsettling in terms of he has Grove, therefore he can Pyroclasm. Uh, without having to have a chromatic star or anything around. But I think we just have to go for it. We can't really wait around. So just hold and hope. He cracks a relic, which is good news. Plays a relic and then an expedition map. If we draw on a uh, stony silence there, that would have been pretty amazing. Uh, session there if the 
we've managed to still be silenced there. Um, but we have got Mana Leak now, so things are looking pretty good for us in general. Going to get to attack for 6 here. We've got Count Magic up. Um, he will be able to search up Tron next turn, but we're feeling in a fairly good position. I think hopefully Mana Leak will be able to uh, counter whatever he has to play on the following turn. He's going to have to sort of invest all his mana into putting the Tron together now, which only gives him 3 mana to work with, so that's pretty good. For us, I'm going to drop Resto to keep the pressure on. Sorry about how slow this is going. I'm struggling, I probably need to invest in computer or something, but uh, <laughs> this is what we're working with, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that puts me down to 5. Uh, so we've got Lethal on board. Obviously he's going to be able to cast something fairly big here, but it's kind of what we want him to do because we are going to be able to mana leak that uh, nicely. Uh, if I remember rightly, I think we've got Ugin. But I might be wrong. We've been kept in suspense, unfortunately. Yeah, there we go. So Ugin doesn't come down thanks to mana leak. And uh, that wraps up game two for in our favour. So that went well. S slightly dodgy keep to begin with, but uh, finding Geist did a lot of good. And then we had the man leak to uh, save us from just getting destroyed on the hit back. Uh, this hand is okay. Obviously, dull Geist is fairly redundant, but. It's an okay hand, we've got Path, got Mana Leak as well, so I suppose this is kind of the stuff we want. So, yeah, I'm reluctant to mulligan that away, really. Want this Expedition map, off and is mine. We have a Spreading Seas, which isn't too bad. So here, yeah, actually going to get the third turn through Tron here, though, because he's uh, dropped the Power Plant into the mine. The Stony Silence, which is very good but we don't really have a lot of time to do anything about it. Uh, here I kind of really want to keep up Mana Leak. I could have Spreading Seas the Power Plant, but that still leaves him like 6 mana. So I'm kind of expecting him to do something big here. Hopefully Mana Leak that, and then we can Spreading Seas the Tower, and then he's got... he's only making 5 mana with his Tron pieces. So obviously getting the Tower is the best possible option. Uh, Thrag Tusk from Zan, which I was exactly expecting, but uh, yeah, that works out fairly well. As our opponent did end up investing a lot of mana into that. We can spread and seize the land we want to now. Unfortunately, we didn't have the option of casting Geist there, and drawing a second Stony Silence is not particularly useful. And Ancient Stirrings. It's an expedition map down, which means you can now search up another tower, which isn't great for us. I uh, feel we need to get aggressive, really, because of the, he is going to start generating crazy mana fairly shortly. And unfortunately, he has an Ugin, which is a good answer for the Geist. Um, one of the few he has available, I guess. Um, so yeah, that takes out the Geist and Ugin still on four loyalty, so not really in a good position. I'm gonna run out a second Geist in the hope that I would kind of prompt him to uh, minus the Ugin again, and then maybe we can kill it with the Restoration Angel as he tries to tick it back up. Um, but yeah, a lot of work trying to uh, Kill this Ugin. He starts popping Kratomatic Stars left, right, and center. Which is very frustrating when I've got two copies of Stony Silence in there in my hand. He shouldn't really be doing any of these things, but uh, we just haven't had the time or the chance to actually stick it, unfortunately. 
Um, so yeah, he, that allows him basically to uh, draw into the pyroclasm, which I can only assume he didn't have, and which is why he was sort of cracking them so much. And he uh, drops a spell skite, which I'm not too concerned about really, but Just not in a great position here. Ugin is really bossing the board. Draw Dispel. Um, I really can't remember what they're for uh, in this matchup. Does that, it doesn't seem good. I feel like it's probably just kind of a, an oversight in terms of what we have left in our deck. So our opponent tries to. Exile the uh, Restoration Angel, which still gives his Ugin one loyalty, which is pretty insane. I decided to path my own guy, Angel. Um, basically, what I was looking to do here was uh, potentially set up a Celestial Colonnade activation for next turn. Um, if we draw a land, um, and then we can kill off Ugin, uh, and then he might be in a reasonable shape. Uh, he gets rid of the stony silence there as well, so he can start cracking off various things. So when scrying, gets him the eye of Ugin. Oh right, yeah, so he can eye of Ugin up the world breaker now. And he has enough mana to cast it next to the discount that eye of Ugin gives him, uh, which is pretty upsetting. So he can blow up the colonnade, and so our chance of killing Ugin is well and truly gone. Uh, none of our cards really do anything. Ugin Detention Sphere, the Ugin, but then he can World Breaker and get his Ugin back with full loyalty, so that actually doesn't really do anything either for us. So yeah, we basically lost this one. Um, opponent came out of the gates a little bit too fast, we probably came out a bit too slow. Oh, he has the Ulamog actually is what he does instead of searching up another World Breaker. Um, which is just as bad, really. Actually, probably worse. <laughs> so, yeah, didn't work out too well for us in the end. Um, yeah, I wasn't really prepared for running against Tron. I wasn't. Well, I wasn't so much. Ex I wasn't really expecting it. Um, I think it's probably a reasonable matchup in general. Spreading C seems fairly good. Um, Stony Silence would be good if you can get it stuck nice and early, and you aren't under too much pressure. Probably a lot better on the. Uh, play than on the draw. Um, dispels obviously, I don't, can't really, really don't remember what these dispels are for. Um, probably just that we didn't have a lot of other cards that did a whole lot in the sideboard I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, in general I think this matchup probably is reasonable, it just didn't really work out in our favour this time.